fastest growing communities in America. He currently serves in an executive position with the Wilmington Business Journal. He recently was one of the organizers and leaders of the first annual Feast of Wilmington. He sent me a little article about that, but then I did a little research, and what I will tell you is that it is, it's the first annual one, four-day festival, and it's being heralded everywhere as one of the most outstanding new food and beverage festivals in the United States of America. Woo! Yes, that's what he does, guys. Everything he does, he brings a unique and a level of humor and determination and commitment to everything. I tell you this, I've never had to spend a day with him that wasn't a good day. So sit back in your seat and get ready and enjoy me as we welcome our own favorite son, Craig Stella. <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, one more thing. He is the owner, and I'm sure you'll miss him. I'll let him do it. He is the owner of the single greatest senior quote in the history of the record store. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, brother. <laughs> Hey, everybody. Can you hear me in the back? Yeah. Woo! Let's do this. I hope you'll uh, clap at least that much after I finish and that you don't leave before I do finish. Um, I, you see there are eclipse glasses on your table. Um, if you don't like what you see and, uh, and if you need to take a nap, just put them on now. Everybody, I'm, uh, thank you so much for having me here tonight. I'll try to bring a little energy. Uh, it's an honor when Mark reached out to me about being the keynote speaker. I must say I was surprised, probably as much as you were. I can say with confidence that I have the lowest high school grade point average of anyone that has ever been the keynote speaker at this event. And college wasn't a whole lot different. Uh, I, I, uh, last year, your speaker was Nikki Hobbs, a titan in the trucking industry. And this year, you got me. I hate it for you. <laughs> when I mentioned at a family gathering last fall that I was going to be speaking tonight, my entrepreneurial nephew, Jack Dalton, who many of you probably know and who is here right there tonight, cleverly said, now, what is exactly the criteria for speaking at this event? <laughs> and he followed, by that, followed that by saying, and how many people on their list said no before they got to you? That's true family support right there. Uh, we good? Yeah. So uh, um, uh, here's a text I got from David Neil Webb after he found out I was speaking. If you can't read from where you're sitting, it's the chamber letter from Crystal about the banquet. And David Neil's handwriting reads, wonder if the speaker this year will be worth a poop. <laughs> Five-hour round trip. Money for meals, he, she better be worth a hoot. So that's, again, support from old friends as well. I'll do the best I can tonight. and Maybe by the time I finish up, we'll all have figured out why Mark and the chamber leadership brought me here. I want to talk about how connections matter, even at a young age, how the people here impacted me personally, and how connections and your network can help you throughout life, and just to say thank you. I'm sure only a few of you will remember the plays I was in or any other insignificant contribution I made while in rector. You might not know that I also had a, a prolific athletic career. Um, I uh, lettered my junior and senior year as a basketball statistician. <laughs> you see me with that number one, baby? Uh, I'm guessing more of you remember me because of this. Nope, one more. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> I had to go to battle for this to get printed in our annual. Mrs. Stafford kept suggesting I was being facetious and disrespectful of our cafeteria. I was trying to be funny, but I was like, I eat there every day and I love it. She finally approved it and let it go to print. Mark told me I had 20 minutes to speak, so for the next 30 minutes, I'm going to do some songs and monologues from my many roles in the Rector Drama Club productions. Then I thought for the last half hour that we'd uh, have an open debate about this fall's uh, elections that are coming up. So we'll, we'll start with uh, Oklahoma. I got to Kansas City on a Friday. By Saturday, I learned a thing or two. For up to then, we didn't have an ID of what the modern world was coming to. I'm not really going to do that. I was just messing with you. <laughs> um, uh, I, uh, I also want to honor the Hall of Fame inductees here tonight. Sherry Dills is mother to my longtime dear friend, Shelly. 
Many of you may not know that Sherry, that, that <laughs> Sherry, Sherry is mother to Shelly. Many of you may not know that Shelly had a terrible crush on me for years. I just kept telling her, I'm dangerous. You should forget about me. I'm going to break your heart. She eventually listened, which opened the door for her to marry John Paul Gentleman and look at their beautiful family. My wife, Diane, and I bought our first home from John Paul in Memphis. Connection. I'm also proud to say that Paige Dills worked with me at the Dixie Cafe in North Little Rock, Little Rock, and Jonesboro. You can't take the work ethic out of a farm girl. <laughs> Paige was a great waitress, and it was fun to, uh, to work with someone from home. I used to hang out at the Dills' home quite regularly growing up, and I always tried to visit when I came back home, despite them having a terribly ferocious dog that consistently tried to bite me for years. What was that dog's name? Star, Star horrible animal. Horrible animal. I also remember the first time I got Buddy Dills to smile. <laughs> that was a pretty big deal. I think Buddy would agree we've been pretty good pals ever since. <laughs> Sherry, you've always been so kind and welcoming to me and my family, and, and I, I want to especially thank you for your kindness to my sweet mother, Sherry, for all those years. You were wonderful to her. Next up. Dewey Shelton was one of my first baseball coaches. He was patient with my high level of inexperience. <laughs> I'd never played an organized sport before moving director. I will be forever grateful to David Shelton for saving me from horrible embarrassment. I'd never worn a baseball uniform before, and I didn't know what to do with those stirrup sock thingies. <laughs> I called David, and he talked me through how to put them on over my regular socks and to pull my pants up over one. Otherwise, I would have likely showed up to my first baseball game with them on my arms. <laughs> David and I laughed a lot about that over the years. He was a good friend and classmate. He had a great sense of humor. Alan, you were always a kind upperclassman. I will say this about the entire Shelton family. Always kind, always helpful, always genuine. I know you're all very proud tonight. How are we doing on our clicks? We good? We good, Macy? Macy's my technician. I was scared to death to have a slideshow because I figured it'd go south and then I'd have to make up a bunch of stuff. My whole family and I hold a special place in our hearts for Joey Pruitt. He looked after our mother, Rena Snow, in so many ways. He helped her often with her computer and her printer and her email. And when she joined Facebook at age 90 <laughs> to keep up with her kids and her grandkids and her great grandkids. You can see some of these Facebook exchanges between Joey and my mother. The, the one at the bottom is about her computer. Joey was our mother's local advisor on so many things. Near the end of her driving years, mom had a car accident. Joey was the first person she asked for. Joey, you looked after our mother like she was your own, and my entire family will be grateful for you always. My parents, Ben and Rena Snow, retired and sold our farm outside of St. Francis in 1970, 1974. Snow's Orchard was about a mile and a half from what is now Pumpkin Hollow, which was founded by my sister Ellen and her husband Daryl. They are here tonight. We moved to Rector because, number one, my dad found a good deal on the house and he wasn't going to give up on a good deal. And number two, it was closer to my mother's parents in Paragool. When we moved here, most folks thought my sister Paige and I were Ben and Rena's only kids. Mom and dad were older than some of my friend's grandparents. Most folks don't know about what my dad affectionately referred to as the first crop. <laughs> the first five kids were born in just six, right at six years. Then they skipped 11 years and had my sister Paige. Four years later, along came trouble. <laughs> Best thing that ever happened to them. My dad was 55 and my mom was 45 when I was born. Paige and I were my dad's second crop. I was an uncle when I was three. We got a new niece or nephew nearly every holiday. I'm grateful to have a table full of family here tonight. I really am. They are all lifelong hard workers and successful in their careers. My sister Celia is here from Memphis tonight. My sister Paige and her husband Richard from Little Rock. 
I told you about Ellen and Daryl and my nephew Jack and his wife Pam and their daughter Abby. I love my family. After more than 20 years teaching public school in Memphis and Wellington, my wife Diane retired and is now teaching in a startup preschool. Our son Benjamin is working full time while pursuing his master's degree at NC State. They couldn't be here, but they are lovely humans and I wish you could have met them. I'm a lucky man. All seven of his kids have always been close, but we decided several years ago that we wanted to have family reunions regularly instead of just seeing each other at funerals and, and the occasional wedding. We have consistently gotten together at least once a year for probably 20 plus years. We have a group text thread that never stops, and, and mind you, most of them are retired, so it, it's just kind of an all-day flow kind of thing. I'll try to update after work when I can. Um, when COVID started in March of 2020, I started up a weekly Zoom meeting with all my siblings that I lovely, lovingly referred to as the geezer Zoom, for obvious reasons. We did it weekly until last fall when our middle sister, Judy, died from ALS. Um, she would be glad to know that we still do it every other week. My oldest sister, Janice, and my brother, Glenn, were not able to be here tonight, but I know they'll be eager to see this video and poke fun at me. Back to moving director. I remember my first day in fifth grade in Mrs. Stahl's room. I think it was about six weeks into the school year. My mom dropped me off, and I was sitting in the back of Mrs. Stahl's room crying, and I remember Todd Wagner coming up to me and t talking to me and helping me feel better. My mother always remembered me coming home that first day saying, I already made two or three good friends. That's a good one right there. My first time meeting the three Romine kids next door was when they were tromping cotton in a trailer in the lot between our house and theirs. Vicki and Steve and David were my friends and playmates for the next several years. Bill and Sue looked after me and the whole Romine family continued to look after my parents until they both died. You were incredible neighbors. Incredible neighbors. Vicki proudly holds the distinction of being the first girl I made out with. Oh, oh, hold on, hold on. And, and the only person I've ever been in a fist fight with. I won! Vicki never forgot that, and she got me back a couple of years later. I was mowing my parents' yard, and I saw a rock bounce in front of me. I'm like, what's going on? I looked over... And, and uh, it was Vicky from their driveway. I told her to knock it off, and I kept mowing the yard. A few minutes later, I woke up on the ground with blood pouring from my skull. I was staring up into Vicky's face with her going, please don't tell on me. <laughs> I still have a big divot in the right side of my head, Vicky. It's right here, Vicky. It's right here. Vicky and I used to play a lot of basketball together with that old goal on the back of our shed. It wasn't long before Vicky was schooling me on the grass basketball court. We all know the basketball career she had after that. I remember Steve honing his gymnastic skills on a homemade high jump we made from tomato steaks and fishing poles in that same spot. And David, there he is. David was my little buddy, my little pal. Sue used to tell me that David looked up to me and thought I was that cool older guy. He followed me around quite a bit. I remember one time taking David on their three-wheeler. We were riding down in the creek, and, and uh, he was probably five or six. He was sitting in front of me, and, and I took a curve too wide and hit a big clump in the creek bank, and I flipped this over like a pancake and smashed David's little face down in the mud, and I was on top of him. The three-wheeler was on top of me, and he gets up, and he had mud all down his bottom lip. His eyes were covered. It was in his ears, and, uh, uh, you know, he was a mess. And I, I can't remember if I got in trouble for that or not. I'm pretty sure that David didn't tell on me. It's also worth noting that I sharpened my comedic chops listening to Jerry Bird, Frank Farmer, and Bill in the Romine Glass and Trim shop. I probably learned some other things too back then. <laughs> my first real job was the summer before sixth grade mowing June Priest and Nettie Clayton's yard. This is what I believe to be my first business referral opportunity brought about by Bill Romine, and that would kind of shape the rest of my time in Rector because that is how I met Gail Burns. She was a neighbor to June and Nettie. Before long, I was mowing her yard, which led to her suggesting I be in my first play in sixth grade. That would lead to several more roles in multiple plays and a deep involvement in the drama club. I went on to major in theater at ASU and, and in graduate school at Ole Miss. Hold that thought. So growing up in Rector, I was grateful to have a lot of great summer jobs. I had some experience driving tractor on our farm. I met Doyle and, Van, and Dale Van Gilder through church connection and drove tractor for them during weed harvest and bean planting. 
Noel was a force in nature. He was stronger with one arm than most men I knew with two. Dale was so quiet, but if you got to know him well enough, and there are people that can attest to this, he had a great dry sense of humor. They were good to me. I really loved working for Charlie Grimes. I hauled watermelons for Charlie and took a couple of trips with him to St. Louis with a bob truck full of watermelons. Charlie was always kind and funny, and he was an early supporter of the drama club in Rector. I experienced one of the dumbest things I've ever done on a job while working for Charlie, and I don't think he ever found out about it. We were hauling watermelons for Charlie, and I'm not going to name names, but, but we thought it would be a good idea to skip lunch and instead, instead go to Wanda's across the bridge where, where we bought and consumed a, a couple of cases of beer on our lunch break. I have vivid memories of myself and others throwing watermelons while simultaneously throwing up in the blazing hot sun. Never did that again. I also drove tractor for Joe Burns a couple of southern summers, another referral opportunity. Joe was an excellent farmer. I remember him being, being very proud one day when I was able to do an improvised repair on a piece of equipment in the field and Joe telling me I should consider agricultural engineering. I do have a little bit of an engineering brain, but I, I made it clear to Joe that I don't think I would ever study that hard. I do have one other rector job memory that is a favorite, and it involves the infamous Lawrence brothers right there sitting at this table. If, if, I'm happy to point them both out. Um, Rob and Scott, who are here tonight, and their brother Larry and I were helping their dad, Jerry, cut and haul wood. We were taking a little break, and we started some kind of game of tag or something, and Scott read head-on into Jerry's brand-new hot wire fence and got all tangled up in it. Larry and Rob and I were laughing at Scott flopping around like a jackrabbit in that very live hot wire fence, and there he, then Jerry proceeded to yank Scott loose from the fence and start kicking his rear for tearing it up. <laughs> Wood hauling comedy gold right there. Scott, you seem to have survived it. I'm grateful to have a few class of 1982 classmates here this evening. Go Black Cats! Ryan Woods, Michelle Manning Haley, Laura Mosley Manthe, Greg Sane. Am I missing anybody? No. Oh, Shelly Dills, yeah. I, I, I wrote you over in the bar. I talked about you earlier. <laughs> yeah, which was all, all true. Uh, I'm especially grateful for my, my longtime pal, Brian Woods, being here tonight. He was my best pal in high school. He gave me countless rides back and forth to ASU during college and was my roommate my freshman and junior year. He always looked out for me. He had my back then and has ever since. Rob Lawrence and I spent a lot of time together getting in trouble, too. And my childhood best friend from Piggott, Scott Crossfield, is here tonight, too. And thanks for joining the Rector Chamber of Commerce. You are going to write a check, aren't you? Uh, I came home in 2011 to, to MC Miguel Burns' retirement celebration. It was an awesome night. There were so many former students of Gales here to show their appreciation. The teacher I met while mowing yards forever changed the path. I took in school, in college, in graduate school, and in life. I know her influence was the same on hundreds of other kids throughout her years teaching theater locally and her impact on theater, education, and performances statewide. So Macy's going to start a little slow scroll through some here, so hopefully you'll have time to read some of these, but you'll certainly recognize some of the faces. I'm sharing these photos because I can, and uh, I reckon some of you will have memories and connections. I also love sharing these because most of them came from a scrapbook my mom kept of all my plays. I guess scrapbooks are now mostly Facebook. These are refre reflections of all Gail's hard work that started basically with nothing. I'm still dear friends with people I, I was in plays with here, lovely humans like Randy Lyles, Malia Utley Lewis, Ellen C. Meadows, Steve Crawford, who drove 500 miles to be here for this speech. When I spoke to Gail a couple of weeks ago, I said I'm going to try to reflect on my experiences here that I've carried with me that have helped me be successful in my work and engaged in my community. And she said, Craig, do you remember how hard we had to work with the community to get donations and lumber and paint and supplies and sound and lighting equipment with little to no budget and recruit volunteers and academy board members and to convince the administration to let us keep doing those shows? That's the essence of community engagement. That's the kind of work a chamber does. I realized she was exactly right. The skills I learned here have fitted my career in sales and networking, serving on nonprofit boards and volunteering my time and my engagement with my own chamber of commerce and, and other community partners. While I was at ASU, I had so many great instructors, some names you may have heard, the infamous Carol Pratt, 
I don't know if any of you met her. Terry Huckabee was another one. Molly Simpson and several others. But my most influential teacher was Bobby Wayne Simpson. Even though he's not specifically part of my rector stories, several students from rector were mentored and influenced by Bobby Wayne. Bob died from early onset Alzheimer's this past year. It, it was largely due to his influence and mentoring that I was able to attend his alma mater, Ole Miss, for graduate school. While I only completed half of my master's studies, yeah, that's how I rolled back then. That's a, mar that's a marble red right there. While I only completed half my master's studies, he never judged me or indicated any disappointment in me. He continued to be a kind men mentor, offering guidance when I sought it. I be he became a lifelong dear friend. Again, it was a, an, an honor to speak in his service. When I left grad school at Ole Miss, I moved to Little Rock because my sister Paige had a, crash, cra a couch I could crash on. Please be patient with me here. I'm going to quickly whip through my working career. I promise we'll circle back to Rector shortly. Here's another business referral reference. A guy I knew from ASU Theater named Randy Poole helped me get a job waiting tables at the Dixie Cafe on Redson Park in Little Rock. Actors make great waiters. A few months later, I went into management training. and Twelve years later, we had 26 restaurants, and I was supervising three of them in Memphis and then the Jonesboro and Paragould locations. I know some of you still miss the Dixie Cafe. I got to reconnect with so many rector folks when opening the Jonesboro restaurant and again opening the Paragould restaurant a couple of years later. Danny and Gail, I proudly remember the first time you came and brought the boys and you came to the Jonesboro restaurant when it opened and I came to your table and visited you. That was a big deal to me. I should mention that I got to work with some other awesome rectorites in my time with Dixie Cafe. Dana, Adam William, Dana Adams Williams worked at the Jonesboro location when I was general manager and we have been dear friends ever since. Vicky, Vicky Romine also worked with me in, in North Little Rock. In 1999, I stepped away from the restaurant business as I had kind of hit the restaurant burnout stage. I greatly valued the Dixie owners, Alan Roberts and Gordon Gondek, and I still have many dear friends from those days. Here's another referral. Shelley's husband, John Paul, got me a job at the United Equipment Case Dealership, and I worked there until we moved to Wilmington in 2003. When we moved to Wilmington, I made the switch to sales. Best thing I ever did for my career, I guess, because I get to talk a lot. I, I worked for Auto Trader from 2003 to 2009. Once again, it came down to my network. My mother-in-law forwarded me an email about a job opportunity with the Greater Wilmington Business Journal and Wilma Magazine, and I've been there now for 15 years. When I first started, we had the traditional twice-monthly newsprint business journal and the monthly women's magazine called Wilma. We had a few digital properties. We hosted a couple of events, a quarterly power breakfast, which, which amazingly has four to 600 uh, people in attendance at every breakfast, uh, a women's only 5K race called the Wilma Dash, I remember the first year, Wilma Dash had about 275 runners. We expect over 1,500 women to run in the race this year. Woo! Over the years, we've added multiple events like the Coastal Entrepreneur Awards, Wilmington Biz Conference and Expo, Healthcare Heroes, and our Women to Watch Leadership Initiative with an awards program and many other leadership offerings for women built off the Wilma Magazine brand. In 2018, we added a quarterly um, high-end business magazine called Wilmington Biz Magazine. Our company is now called Wilmington Media and Marketing. Our publisher and owner, Rob Kaiser, is an innovative guy, very loyal, of great in integrity. That's her. My best work pal, Maggie, and I have worked together this whole time. I'm very proud of and love my work family. We recently started, as Mark said, a brand new event called Feast Wilmington. For this inaugural year, we've featured over 70 local chefs, 20 local breweries, and a thriving local distillery. There were four events over the course of three days. Wilmington, as he also mentioned, is a fast-growing coastal city with amazing beaches and an historic downtown riverfront. Ryan Woods has visited me there. Michelle and Brett Haley have visited me there. Schedule your next beach vacation in Wilmington. I'll at least come by and say hey to you. Uh, you can't stay at my house. Um, <laughs> I'll, I'll meet you out somewhere. I promise to wrap up soon, but please let me acknowledge some more folks and more of the positive influences that came from my time in Rector. Reading, writing, reading, writing and speaking well, and spelling were very important to my parents. I had so many great teachers across all academic disciplines in my time here, but I want to especially thank Becca Simmons and Willie Whitney for how strongly they reinforced my parents' belief in the importance of literacy, of reading for learning, and of reading for pleasure. 
I'm so glad Be Becca is winning her battle with cancer. Keep fighting, Becca. A lot of folks, Willie Whitney, man, what a force of nature. What a force of nature. Over the last couple of weeks, I got to hear some great stories from Mark Manchester about his time with Mrs. Whitney in Manila. She kept on being a, a force for years after she left Rector. I've also been talking to Marv Whitney lately about growing up in Rector, attending First Baptist Church together, and how important Brother Guy and Willie were in shaping his success in life. I have some great Marv tales to share, but I'll have to share those away from the microphone. <laughs> Please send all your good energy and prayers and support Marv's way as he faces his own health battle. I want to thank Lisa Manchester for her tireless support of the Drama Club. Mrs. Mrs. Jenkins helped me learn to type, and I use that every day. Mrs. Esmond made algebra and trig almost enjoyable. Almost. And she had a great rascally sense of humor. Miss Malin was such a guiding force by having real conversations with kids not old enough to fully understand what a real conversation is. And she's hilarious. Always thought Rob Lauder was awesome. I have a great memory of Coach Mike Clark. He caught me, caught me flipping somebody off in our last senior meeting on the last day of high school. He joyously dragged me out in the hall and paddled me while laughing. <laughs> Not many people end their high school career that way. I, I guess I'm drawn to funny people. This community supported me at school, at church, at work, and helping me remember to not go too far down the rabbit hole in any of our crazier exploits and adventures. The gravel pits and cat bridge and dog bridge were the sites of much foolishness, but there was kind of a grounding force at work here that helped me stay out of big trouble. I'm lucky, and, and Rena Snow was sitting on my shoulder, too. I want to say how grateful I am to Ron and Nancy Kemp. They were so supportive of our plays and productions when I was in high school and did such an incredible job publishing our hometown newspaper. I'm proud of that connection and the fact that I've now been in the publishing industry for almost 21 years. I love that Ashley works for the Arkansas Press Association and we have several mutual publishing connections as my company is in association with the Arkansas Business Publishing Group. I was honored when Ron and Nancy suggested many years ago that Jonathan spoke with, speak with me when he was considering a career in the restaurant business. I'm quite sure I told him, ease in there, pal. Be careful. You can get stuck in that game. My, huh? Did he? he? Yeah, yeah. My siblings and I were blessed with amazing parents. My dad, Ben, was a good man, sometimes quiet, sometimes curmudgeonly, but a very good man and a provider. My mom, Rena, was a next level rock star mom, grandmother, artist, comedian, quilter, chef, homemaker, mentor, peacemaker, and a woman of strong faith. I want to thank a myriad of people that looked after my parents and especially my sweet mother, Rena, for 70, 17 years after my father died. Dina Mills kept my mom well stocked with books. I want to say there were times she would check out seven or eight new books weekly from the library. She had so many supportive folks at Rector First Baptist, like the Hamiltons that are here tonight, Glenna Bookout, Reuben and Carolyn C., and so many others. Ellen C. Meadows was, and my mom developed a, a lovely, special friendship. Each year, I share this post Ellen wrote about my mom when she died. Back in the day, Jack and Bonnie Clayton were great neighbors to my mom and dad. They let dad have a piece of land to expand his garden because his own yard apparently wasn't big enough. Debbie Clayton and Belinda Baker helped my folks, Don and Sue and David Mosley and Laura. I know David was called to the house more than once to help my mom get dad up off the floor when he had a fall. Jane Holifield was such a dear friend to my mom. Brenda Mills used to sit with my dad so mom could run some errands and just get out of the house for a while and especially Bill and Sue Romine. My parents were so fortunate to have them as neighbors. They were tireless in their care for them and had a watchful eye. I know I've forgotten or missed some folks and I, you know, it's been 40 something years and you know, this is a lot. Please forgive me, just know my family and I are grateful to all of you. Okay, I hope the sound's gonna work. Let's close with something a little goofy. So I've continued to dabble in the creative arts all these years 
in seventh grade. You see that hair? Let me share something with you. I have a very large head. That hair is right here, which means from the, that is 10 inches long hair. Just want you to be aware of that. And it's a beautiful blonde, isn't it? Gorgeous hair. Gail took this amazing hair and put me in overnight curlers, which I had to wear on the school bus and in my first three classes to style my hair for a matinee. I tried unsuccessfully to hide the curlers under a toboggan. Kids can be cruel. <laughs> this experience prepared me to dress as Dolly Parton for a fundraiser. <laughs> I'm really sorry, Dolly Parton. That, no, no, I'm not throwing any shade on you. It was, just, it was just a funny thing. It was a lip sync contest. Cle clearly, I'm not scared to embarrass myself for a good cause. Joey Pruitt would suggest we needed a wind mic for that uh, that that uh, performance. Um, I was in an independent film in Memphis called Eli Parker is Getting Married, and a commercial in Wilmington that ran for six years that wasn't really all that great. This past year, I was in a short film shot in Raleigh and an independent feature-length film called A Song for Imogene that is winning awards at festivals as we speak. Clearly, a non-speaking role. <laughs> And this is a fun little commercial I did several years ago, and it's still my absolute favorite. We moaned our preacher. And I loved it. <laughs> Those women were awesome, by the way. <laughs> I hope I have conveyed the impact this community has had on me and my appreciation for a Chamber of Commerce. The Wilmington Chamber of Commerce Leadership Program expanded my network and launched my engagement in nonprofits in my community. I hope you can see how leaning on community and connections is a theme I learned here at a young age. Networking has helped me and has allowed me to help others throughout my career. In short, Rector taught me the importance of community. The Rector Labor Day Picnic is an iconic community engagement event. I hope you all are very proud of your work. I sincerely hope my own community engagement inspires others to seek opportunities to make positive impacts in their communities. It started here with each one of you, and I'm enormously grateful for your invaluable influence as I stand before you, a proud new member of the Rector Chamber of Commerce. Thank you. You're welcome. I like some things to me. <laughs> <laughs> I have so much more I could tell you. <laughs> we want to thank everyone tonight for coming, but we have a little fun now. So everybody has got their sunglasses for you to enjoy Monday's fun. Yeah. <laughs> okay. On the back, there should be. A, it won't be on everyone, but on some, you will find a black dot on the back of your glasses. And if you do, if you find your black dot, raise your hand. No. There's a great, there's a great big black dot. Not the, not the great big black dot. It's like a little deep dot on the side. 
All right. Okay. You are the proud owner of the centerpiece. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Well, I'm going to tell you something, Craig. The hair. <laughs> Kelly Scobie used to have hair like that. <laughs> it's always Kelly Scobie, isn't it? <laughs> you know, you're really good. And we appreciate you a lot. Thanks. And that's a pretty simple way to put it. But, uh, it's come a long way, and we're so proud of our hometown folks, and we love it when hometown people come and successful like Craig and share their, their history and their, their, their memories, and we can all relate to so many things that he mentioned tonight, and so many people that uh, were mentioned tonight, and, and uh, it's good special memories, and that's why our people that, that appreciate Rector, and that's right. so it's been a small town, and it, it is. Thank you for being here. It's uh, been a wonderful night, and congratulations to all those that were honored tonight. Every, very deserving folks. Very deserving folks.